back from Arfield. What a volley! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently. And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end. Oh, what a goal! What a goal from Robbie Blake! Burnley's first goal in the Premier League is something very, very special. Wade Elliott has that change of pace and he's got away from Montgomery. It's the path of McCann and the follow-up plays the net. What a strike from Wade Elliott. A bolt from the Claret and Blue. Oh, goodness me! What a goal from Patterson! If that is to be the one that takes them to Wembley, you cannot argue with that. Pure quality. I mean, if there's any justice in the world, Burnley would surely score from this corner. Swung right in there. Ball in there. Yeah! Michael Kennan! Oh, that's Come justice! On! That is justice at the Amex Stadium. Burnley are level and deserve to be. Hello everybody and welcome back to the latest episode of Turfcast Podcast with me, Joe Redman, of course. We'll be doing uh, a podcast on every single signing that we've made so far this summer. So welcome to the the, the seventh. No, we didn't do one on um, Egan Riley, did we? So this is the sixth episode in, in this series. Hopefully there's more to come. Uh, we've just discussed Josh Cullen. If you haven't seen that already, please go and check it out on the channel. Today, we're going to discuss Ian Martson, who's come on loan from Chelsea, but of course, he spent last season on loan at Coventry. So we're going to do here what we did with Taylor Harewood Bellis. Of course, he came in from City. It didn't make any sense getting a City fan on because he wasn't on much about him. So we got a Stoke fan on. So with Ian Markson, he was on loan at Coventry last season. So I'm, I'm pleased to say we're joined by Miles from Sky Blues Fan TV. How are you doing, mate? Good evening. How are you? Thanks for having us on. No, you're welcome. Thanks for coming on, mate. It took us a few days to get it sorted, did it? But we finally got it sorted. Finally got it sorted. Um, but yeah, let's get into it then. Um, usual usual stuff. We'll, we'll find out some questions just to get some information about what type of player he is. But first, I want to pick your brains. Of course, he, he was on loan at your boys last season, just looking at his Wikipedia page. Played 40 times for you. So, you know, that's quite a lot. There's, there's what, 46 games in the season? So he's only missed six games there. Uh, got three goals as well. Were you disappointed that you didn't manage to, to get him back on loan or, or maybe sign him per- permanently at Coventry? Yeah, I mean, you've you've got an absolute uh, star there uh, in the making. I mean, he 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 was absolutely outstanding for us last season. Um, I mean, when he left um, after the season, he there was rumours he was going to um, Borussia Dortmund. Uh, it looked like he was he was heading that way. While he was with us during January, I think there was rumours flying around he was going to Barcelona. So you know, you you you've got an absolute. Superstar there in in Ian Matson. He during his time with us, he was absolutely superb. I mean, he started off a little bit slow uh, because the season before us, he was at Charlton, um, so that that was League One football. So stepping up to the Championship was um, a little bit more difficult for him. Uh, but um, once he got going after a couple of games, you could see that. You could see why he was he was at Chelsea, and you know, as a young lad that's going to come through the ranks, and he's just going to go even further. I mean, he plays for the um, D- Dutch under twenty ones as well, so you know, he, he is absolutely quality. I mean, he, he's his performances for us last season. I mean, one that really stands out for me is is the one against Fulham at home. Uh, when we absolutely annihilated him 4-1 and his goal that he scored and his celebration down towards Singer's Corner, which you'll, you'll see this year when you come and visit the CBS. Um, we're, we're quite rowdy down there and he, his little face when he scored that goal was just uh, over the moon because I think I think if um, sir, memory serves me right, that was his first goal for us. Um, yeah. he, he got a goal at Reading. Uh, which was um, a bit of a deflection. But um, if you don't shoot, you just don't know where the ball's going to go. And uh, we were st- stood behind that and we were looking at it going, it's, it's looping the keeper and it just went in. So, you know, the the young lads, he's got talent. You, you've definitely signed someone special. 
yes, we all wish we could have got him back. And we really do. I mean, we've had loan players in the past, over the last few years, where we thought, oh, we want him back. Um, but you've stolen him away from us. <laughs> and uh, I hope he does well for you, to be honest. Um, he, he is a star in the making. He really is. And you guys, I mean, I know what your fan base is like. We see you on telly and everything. And, um, you know, you, you're going to love him. And, and he's such a nice lad as well. I mean, he's so yeah. down to earth. He's a bit yeah. of a poser. Likes his uh, clothes and oh, style yeah. and fashion. Now, if you look following him on Instagram, he's, he's like posing away, you know. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's a good lad. You're going to like him. He, he's brilliant. Yeah, glowing endorsement there. Um, you, you say he's, he's you know, he's, he, 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 there were rumours he were going to Dortmund, rumours he were going to Barcelona. Are you surprised he's not gone somewhere higher than than the Championship, you know, the Premier League or, or the Bundesliga or something like that? Are you not surprised he's not in the Premier League? Yeah, I, I probably thought that someone like Fulham or Bournemouth might have come in for him or, or even Forrest uh, because he could step up to that level. Uh, maybe what was probably holding him back there is that when he goes forward, he, he can get caught out a little bit. Um, and he's, he's, if you come up against a team that plays football, uh, like Fulham, um, you know, they, they play football. And um, it, and Bournemouth, he, he, he did really well against those sort of teams. If you come up against a physical side like Preston or Stoke, uh, someone like that, uh, maybe Sunderland this year, they're going to be quite physical, I think. Um, then he can be a little bit lightweight. He's obviously got to put... I mean, he's only young, so he's got to build himself up a little bit stronger. But then again, he might be different this year. For you, he might have built himself up through the summer. Yeah. And, you know, he might be that one step ahead and built himself a bit stronger. I mean, I remember us going to Luton um, and we got absolutely annihilated 5-0. And he got caught out all night long. All night long. Um, he, he just... There was something about that night, um, Jake Clark Salter as well. They were both playing alongside each other, both Chelsea lads. And for some reason, it just didn't work that night. Um, I think maybe Luton came at us with a little bit more pace down our um, down our left-hand side where Matson plays. But I think, you know, it, hopefully he's learned from his spell with us. And um, I mean, Mark Robbins and AD Vardash, their coaching would have taught him a lot. And, and you, you, you're going to see a star, to be honest. Yeah, fair enough. What sort of type of player is he? Now? Obviously, I know he's a left-sided defender. He's going to play a left-back for us, probably. He might even be on the bench. This is a bit of a debate between Burnley fans. Is he going to displace Charlie Taylor? We don't know. Um, but what type of player is he then? You mentioned he can get caught out. Is, is he is he more of an attacking sort of fullback? Is he likely to get up the wings and get some crosses in? Or is he likely to cut inside and do things himself? What, what, what sort of things did you see him doing a lot last season? He, he, he can do all sorts. He's, he's more of a left wing-back, to be fair. So... Um... If, if you go three at the back and play left wing back and right wing back, he, he can get forward and he can uh, he can cut inside. He likes to cut inside, but I'll tell you where he did shine last season. Um, he played a number 10 role for a couple of games. Uh, one of those games was at Southampton. I don't know if you've seen the cup tie at Southampton. He played, Robbins put him into the middle and um, O'Hare was just in front of him with uh, Victor and he, he looked... He, he looked class. You yeah. probably could fit him anywhere in your team. Um, you know, he could even play left wing if you go four four two, or you know, it depends what on your formation. But for us, he was more of a left wing back. Reading, he played as an attacking midfielder. That's where he got his goal from. Um, so you know, he, he he could play in the middle. He could play left wing back. You couldn't play centre back. <laughs> I think he would drift out too far. But um, yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's quick. He's, he's very, very quick. And you're going to see that. And, um, you know, as I say, the, the, the way he plays, you, you could just chuck... If, if you're struggling in the middle, someone gets a knock and you haven't got any strength on the bench, you know, you could always chuck him into the number 10 role or in the middle of the midfield because he could play in either of those roles. Yeah, interesting. It sounds like we're quite heavy in the midfield sort of department, so I'm not sure. It's, it's looking like we're going to play 4-2, two, 2-2 two, two with Vincent Company with, with the full-backs with quite a lot of space in front of them, maybe acting as wing-backs. But it's, it's quite fluid as Vincent Company's defence, according to his time at Anderlecht. It, it can go from a 4 to a 3 or with, with, with a midfielder dropping in and, and two people coming out. It's a bit complicated, to be honest. Uh, but you mentioned, obviously, he had a, a stinker at Luton. 
Um, what, what happened there then? Like, what, what, what's his defensive qualities like? That's what I want to know. Like, as a, it seems like it's going to be different this year, but as a Burnley fan, we always seem to hang our hat on our defence and how <laughs> like how strong they are defensively. Um, so what sort of you mentioned his weaknesses already? So like going to them weaknesses, and is it did it just not work formation wise in that game, or was he getting caught out? You mentioned he's fast, so I presume it wasn't lack of pace, or was it his positioning? What 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 what, what was his weakness that night? I think what it was, um, we were on the back foot from the off. Uh, we conceded a penalty in the first three minutes, which was uh, right. clearly, it was it was about three yards outside the box, dived in the box and got a penalty. And I think after that, I think that the, it's just sort of, they lost the plot a bit, I think. I don't think it was to do with his ability. I just think that night, they just had an off night. And I mean, the lad, uh, to be honest, is a young lad. So, you know, there's a lot of pressure on his shoulders there. And when, I mean, Luton, uh, when they came at us with pace down our left-hand side, um, it sort of caught him off balance. So he, he sort of got caught on his heels, got flat-footed, uh, couldn't turn quick enough to get back or, you know, trap back for, you know, to, to cover the, cover the defence or anything like that. Yeah. He just couldn't get back quick enough because he got turned and flat-footed. So I hope he's learned to try and hold any player in front of him up. Like, I mean, um, to stop anyone from turning him. I think if someone turns him quick, he struggles because he gets flat footed. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, other than that, I, th I think he can cope. The only other thing is, he's a bit lightweight. Uh, and I hope he's built himself up really, to be honest, because if he, if he builds himself up, um, it, it certainly changed the all round game for him to be, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, well, to be fair, when James Tarkovsky came in, he was a little bit lightweight, but he's left an absolute beast. I mean, I know it's a completely different management team now, but, you know, there might be some creatine left over in the stock room. So, fingers crossed, Ian can get on that. Um, of course, his parent club's Chelsea. What do you see his future like? Do you see his future like as breaking into a team like Chelsea or do you think he's always going to be playing around the, the lower league, lower Premier League, top-half championship sort of clubs? Do you, think he can, do you think he can go to the next level and play for teams like Chelsea? I, th I think... If if he has a successful spell at Burnley uh, under Vincent Company, I think um, he could possibly get in into that Chelsea team. It all depends on who Chelsea bring in. You know, um, we could say that about any of our players, and you could say about any of your players. You know, where could they go? Yeah. Possibly, he would probably go to another Premiership side, or if you get promoted straight back up, and he's with you you'll have a bit of money to probably go and approach Chelsea and buy him on a, on a permanent if it works out for you. Um, because he does deserve to play in the Premier League. I, I believe that to, to start with. And as I say, with Dortmund and Barcelona after him, they, it, you know, he's got, he's got class, he's got quality. And we've seen it. I mean, some of the balls he plays, crossfield balls, you know, from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, you know, virtually length of the field, he, he would pick yeah. out it would pick out um, Kane, Todd Kane running down the right-hand side or Dabo. Um, it'd pick out Victor. You know, he, he just... Yeah, Rodriguez. Vision, yeah, his vision, his, <laughs> his vision's absolutely superb. And you can see that he's come from Chelsea. It's, it's yeah. a bit like Ben Sheaf with us. We got him from Arsenal. And you can see the quality in him now. And you can see why he was at Arsenal. But because these big teams like Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United, they all bring in different players who have been around a long time in different leagues yeah. or are slightly better, these young lads don't get the chance. So, so the way Matson's worked his way through from League One to Championship with us and now gone to you, uh, who possibly will go straight back up, um, you know, it, it's good for him. And if you do go straight back up uh, and he does do well, you've got to go and sign the lad because yeah. he, he will shine in the Premier League one day. He really will. Yeah, fair enough. I've just been looking at his stats there. And obviously, we've mentioned the fact that he got three goals last season. Only one assist, though. Is that just uh, the way you played or is that part of his game that he needs to work on? Maybe maybe making more killer passes, that sort of thing? Uh, I, I missed that. You've gone all robotic. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was just I was looking at his stats. Yeah. And last season, obviously, we mentioned that he got three goals. We've already discussed that. But he only got one assist. Is that uh, uh, something in your tactics or is that something like a part of his game that he could probably work on? 
it's probably part of his game that he he should work on because I mean he's had plenty of opportunity to um to to get the assists in. I think maybe sometimes he when he gets forward he can sometimes think do I do I take it myself? Do I do I pass yeah. it? Or I think with us, you see, we, we had so we've got so many creative players. Um, it, it it sort of probably didn't shine him in that sort of light to make the assist because you know we had we've got Gustavo Hamer who who makes loads of assists. We've got O'Hare, Matty Godden, um, Todd Kane. You know, there's a few players that can create a little bit more, um, but as I say, that the young lad is learning the game and it, it can only get better. So maybe Vincent Company can coach him in that way to get a few more assists. Yeah, fingers crossed. And it's looking like we're going to be more of an attacking team next season compared to what we've been in recent seasons where we've been more defensive. Now, I've got to ask you, I've got to di- diverse a little bit and ask you a question. Of course, there's a lot of rumours about Callum O'Hare at the minute. You know, obviously, one of your actual players... We're, we're apparently really interested in him. Mark Robbins had a few swipes at company. Company said a comment that he probably shouldn't have said. Obviously, he's your player and a few people got upset about that. I don't think I'd like it if the shoe was on the other foot, if I'm being honest. But what's the latest on your side of it? Because our side is a case of we want him, but we haven't been able to agree a fee yet with Coventry because Coventry want X amount of money. And Burnley are probably trying to think, well, that's probably a bit too much. Is that a fair assessment at the minute? Uh, you're not having him. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Fingers crossed. The Soli- Fingers, you can keep your hands crossed, off the Solihull Messi. You're not having him. <laughs> is, 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 is that, is that, is that, is, You're not having him. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Hopefully we can get it over the line because he does look a very good player. He does look a very good player, I'll be honest. He's, 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 he's superb. I mean, the young the young man, um, the young man missed one game all season last season. Really? The season before, he missed uh, one game and... Um, his his work ethic is just phenomenal. I mean, the game that he didn't play was Swansea away, and um, you could tell that he wasn't on the pitch. You really could. I mean, he he, the young lad is just brilliant. And not only that, now he's a superstar on stage with Tom Grennan. So you know, yeah, he's I become a that. rock star overnight yeah, on the Radio that. One Big Weekend. But um, yeah, I mean, it, the the lad. I mean. We we can't believe we got him for free, and and you know he didn't cost us anything from Villa. Um, Villa didn't want him because Grealish was still there, and the only thing about him is he he probably could have scored twenty goals last season, and he just he forgets to shoot sometimes, and when he does shoot, you know he's got a chance of getting it in the back of the net. But sometimes yeah. he gets a bit carried away and he carries on dribbling the ball and running through the box and he goes past the goal yeah. and you think, where are you going? The goal's there. <laughs> come back, come back and have a shot. But, um, yeah. you know, his, his work is he, he's, he's superb. I mean, I, I mean, I don't think I've seen a player that works so hard as him since probably we had David Speedy. That's going back a long, long time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I mean, his work rate was out of this world. And I think that Callum O'Hare, I mean, he, he, I think he got the most fouls last season. Everyone just wanted to kick him. I remember going yeah. to Barnsley, first game of the season, Barnsley away. And um, how on earth Barnsley ended up still with 11 players on the pitch, I still don't know to this day. Because I think every single player, including the substitutes, took him out. Every, they went, right, your turn, your turn, your turn. Yeah. And the young lad was all over the floor. And then Mark Robbins says, he comes, he gets in the change room, he's got bruises all over him because everyone just kicks him. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Well, it's it's an interesting one, that one. It seems to be stalling a little bit, so who knows, you might get to keep hold of him. But honestly, it's been I, I think you're going to have to spend pleasure. a lot of money. You yeah, have to well, spend it's, a lot it's, of money. It's, I'm, yeah, I'm, not... I'm seeing some figures of around 9 million, so we'll see. It depends, well, it depends what's happening. Good. It's like, you know, we're, we're not... I mean, we, we've given players away before. We've given Callum Wilson away. We've given Madison away for, for peanuts. We give Tom Bayliss yeah. away for peanuts. Uh, Sam McCallum we give away for peanuts. And we're not in that situation now. Yeah, you know? you're in a better position now. Yeah, and, and Mark Robbins has always said, he's, he's come out in the press and Mark Robbins has always said, we haven't got to sell. We don't have to sell. We, we're in a situation where we can... We don't have to sell anyone. 
Yeah. But if the figure's right, obviously, you look at it. And, yeah. I mean, nine million in my eyes isn't enough. When you look at Swansea selling players for 12, you look at Hull selling players for 20 million. If you get O'Hare for nine million, is a steal. And yeah. and if you go up and he plays in the Premier League, he he's one that will shine in the Premier League as well because you yeah. get more time on the ball in the Premier League. So, um, you know, he, he, he would be an absolute superstar. But I'm, I'm just saying it now, you're not having him. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting because it's gonna rumble on. But it, we've got to the twenty minute mark, so I kind of like to wrap it up around here. But Miles, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, just want to let everyone know where they can find you and where they can find Sky Blues Fan TV on Twitter if they want to watch some of your stuff. Yeah, yeah, you can find us on Twitter uh, at Sky Blue Fans TV One. Uh, we, uh, in fact, actually last night I got a couple of interviews with um, Casey Palmer and Ben Sheaf. Uh, we're on uh, Facebook as well and also on Instagram. And uh, yeah, just give us a shout. Have a look at our channel on podcast on Spotify. So thanks for having us on. It's been great. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, mate. And we'll definitely see you again at some point this season. And who knows, we might get you back on for a chat when we sign Callum O'Hare. <laughs> You're not having him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on, mate. It's been a pleasure.